Gentlemen, welcome back to the Alpha M podcast. I am so excited for you to be a part of this today. We have an incredible group of guests. First time we're having multiple people. Not only are they some of my best friends, they're also my new business partners, which we are going to get into a little bit later and potentially could be your business partners as well. If you are an entrepreneur and have a business and are looking for a little help, a little financing, our new company, Area 627, which can be found at area627.com, may be the answer you're looking for to help you scale from six figures to seven. What I'd like to do now, gentlemen, is go around the room and introduce each of my esteemed partners and friends and incredible entrepreneurs. And uh, what I'd like to do is actually go around and and each of you tell a little bit about who you are and sort of your entrepreneurial journey. All right. I'd say limited to maybe like a three minute kind of, you know, pitch. But uh, let's start with uh, Eric Banholtz, um, a fellow Shark Tank alumni. And, and real quick before I before I get going, we got Eric Banholtz from Beard Brand. We got Antonio Centeno for Real Men, Real Style, not to mention a bunch of other businesses. And we've got Ryan Masters from Show Her Off. Anyway, Eric, why don't you take it away? Tell everybody a little bit about your journey from from the beginning to when you didn't work for yourself to now where we are today. Well, I uh, popped out of my mom way back in uh, 19. We're going granular. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. In all seriousness, um, my entrepreneurial journey, uh, my successful entrepreneurial journey, we'll we'll say that started in 2012 with Beard Brand. It was... um, my first non-failed project. And I used to be a financial advisor. Uh, they, they want you to look a certain way, which you can imagine doesn't look the way I look right now. Uh, so I quit working there. I grew my beard out. Everyone called me Duck Dynasty, Grizzly Adams, or ZZ Top. And those are cool dudes, but they're not me either. These hands were made for keyboards, baby. And uh, They are soft after- and buttery. <laughs> We can talk about how the products got them there too. Uh, but it was um, through an event that I went to where I started meeting other guys who had facial hair that didn't fit that traditional stereotype that I realized there's this whole community of, of what I would end up calling urban beardsmen uh, out there. And I wanted to unite them. Beard brand was going to be the way to unite them. So we bootstrapped our business. I've got two business partners. Uh, so we've never taken a, a dime of outside money. We've never... Uh, even gotten any kind of loans. Uh, we do have a credit card, I guess is the extent of our, our line of credit, but uh, we bootstrapped up to an upper seven figure business uh, with 10 employees and I uh, live a, a life of freedom. So Beard Brand sells men, men's grooming products from your head to to your toe. Obviously we got amazing beard care products, but uh, like Pete and Pedro, uh, we, we serve uh, similar guys, but maybe a little more focused on uh, the bearded guy. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Next up, we've got Antonio Centeno. Now, I got to tell the story real quick. Once again, how I I met Antonio and also Ryan at the same time. So years ago, when I was starting a membership website, it was called IamAlphaM.com. I went and I was looking around. I wanted to create a website where I I charge people a, a monthly fee for additional content. Well, at the time I was on YouTube, Antonio Centeno was also on YouTube and I didn't like him very much. I saw this guy doing videos, talking about the same things I was. And I was like, yo, who is this dude with his hands? Right. Because Antonio, back in the day, it was all about those those mechanical robotic hands. And so I reached out to Antonio and I said, Antonio, hi, you don't know me or maybe you do, but I'm interested in actually using some of your articles because you at the time were writing for The Art of Manliness, which we might talk about here in a little bit. And I said, hey, can I borrow some of your articles to actually have and house them on my website so it's additional content for my my, my paying members? And you said, no. <laughs> lies, said, lies, lies, <laughs> lies. Let me tell the story, Mr. Uh, uh, Marino. You, but, all right, so it all right, started, all right, we were going. down in Key West at a bar called Bareback. And (laughs) no, no, okay. So there is no proof that that email exists, but I will say that we didn't really like each other that much. And in fact, you prompted me to start a YouTube channel because I was like, who is this guy talking about suits? And he doesn't know Jack. And I was already writing at the Art of Manliness. I had a blog. I was a written guy. 
But here's the thing. I don't like to type. Video is actually a lot easier for me. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. My wife finally said, shut up. You know, you just need to make this happen. You were at about 4 million views at the time, I remember. And I started putting out my first videos. And so in many ways, you inspired me. This was back in 2011, 2012. Five years before that, though, I'd started writing and creating content in men's style because I started an online clothier, which, you know, a lot of guys here can attest failed miserably and going through that failure taught me a lot. Uh, that was, you know, even though I had a fancy MBA from Texas, uh, that really didn't, you know, that's where I learned my business is failing, going into a bankruptcy. But what I did learn through that failure is I can create content. And I, if anything, I'm like maybe the professor of style is what my guys tell me. I'm all about the science of style and helping men achieve and become who they know themselves to be. And through that, over the last decade, we've been able to build up our audience and our following. We've also now got a grooming company called Vitaman. Me and you, Aaron, we own a media company called Menfluential. We used to have a conference. And yeah, somewhere along the way, we brought in this Ryan Hunter Masters, uh, Jeffrey the Third of, you know, whatever his name is nowadays. But uh, yeah, Ryan. Like, All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to back this up. All right, so... Antonio reaches out to me, says, hey, I'm going to this thing called VidCon. <laughs> I said, OK. He's like, why don't you come out and meet me? And I was like, I don't know. I do not like to travel. I also do not you know, like meeting people that I don't know, if I'm being completely honest. It was totally outside of my comfort zone. He said, hey, come out, meet me. We'll go to this thing. It's a YouTube event. And then afterwards, we'll have a, a, a conference and sort of invite some of our other men's lifestyle content creator people. And up until this point, that this was me being very closed minded. I did not want to, I, I viewed everybody as competition. And so, you know, when Antonio reached out to me and said, Hey, why don't we do this together? I was very leery. And, and honestly, I didn't trust him a hundred percent. I'm like, what does he want? What is he angling? What is the motivation? Um, turns out the motivation was just to get a bunch of good people together and, and have some fun and, and help enrich other people's lives. And so it was that moment I said, yes, let's go do this. And when, when we went out, we also had Ryan. Ryan was somebody that for the first time I was, I was meeting, he was Antonio's, like one of his great friends. And the thing about Ryan that struck me the first time I met him, he was walking around this conference in a Spartan outfit, shirtless cape, the nine, like the whole nine yards. And I thought to myself, who the hell is this dude who is this brave to actually walk around a conference? I was mortified like not like mortified, like hanging out with him, but I was mortified with the thought of actually doing something that courageous and that brave. And it was the first time I met Ryan. And then from this meeting and we had that conference, this was when my life, honestly, as an entrepreneur started to scale everything in my life per professionally started to get better at this point, because I was now around people, my people, I found my tribe. And that's something that's talked about often in, in this whole like entrepreneurial world is finding those that community of people, like-minded individuals that are going to help uplift you, inspire you, and help you whenever you need it. And so enter in Ryan Masters. Ryan, tell everybody about you. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, now you see why we call or I call Antonio, you know, the godfather, because he, one of his superpowers is seeing the good in everybody and, and uniting people and also filtering out the bad. And, and I'm, I was kind of more like Aaron where it's like, well, I don't want to meet. I was like, Antonio, why are you inviting all these guys? We don't need to meet them. Like we're, we're doing fine. Da, 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 da. And, um, and I was so wrong because like Aaron said, like meeting everybody has changed my life. I mean, the conference that Antonio and, and uh, Aaron have put together men influential. I've met some of my best friends, you know, Andy, I talk to him every week and, and all kinds of other relationships have come out of that. So it is something to, it really is a testament to the power of just kind of coming around like-minded people. Um, but yeah, my entrepreneurial journey started 2007. I was 24. I had gotten fired from my job. I was going to sell my home theater equipment to, for $5,000 to fund my new business idea. And it turned out I was my fault, but I took a check and it was a fake check. So I lost $5,000. I had no money. Um, started a family furniture business company. From that, learned a lot about Facebook ad or not Facebook at the time, Google ads, online advertising marketing, because it was sink or swim. Like, like Eric, we had no money, no bootstrap. So any dollar I spent had to come back and bring friends. So did the family business, 
Then I launched my consulting agency, which was managing ads for other companies. Then I started Sparta Strength, which was the fitness channel, um, because I'm a big believer in using vehicles, businesses as a vehicles for the lifestyle I want. And, you know, I wanted to help other guys get in shape. And I knew by doing that, it would force me to get in shape and be at the top of my game. Um, So started that channel, moved to Colorado and uh, still doing the marketing. And then I learned how to dance and I did not know how to dance at all, but I learned how to swing, social swing, country swing. West Coast Swing, and that was a lot of fun, and that's what prompted me to start the brand Show Her Off, which, you know, that's the whole secret to dance, fellas, is you make the girl look good. You show her off. No one's actually looking at us when we dance, so that's that's kind of a relief. And, um, yeah, started that brand and ran it, same thing, like everything, ran it for free, you know, spending a lot of money at first, um, and then I created a, a digital product, which was turning a my romance tours, which is something I did around the country into a digital service. And I've been selling that and that's done really well. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to be here and, and uh, hanging out with everybody. Excellent. All right. So real quick, before we dive into a little bit more about what we're doing in terms of area 627 and, and why we're all so excited about this, I'd like to hear from each of you. We'll start with Eric and go Antonio Ryan. About your biggest failure, what is the biggest failure that you would consider that you've had over your entrepreneurial journey? Because I really feel, you know, from personal experience, it's not necessarily the success that you learn from. It's the hard lessons, the the sleepless nights, the times when you've really effed something up and you've got to basically grow as an individual and fix it or you're going to fail. And so, Eric, what would you consider to be your biggest failure along the journey? And what did that teach you? And how could you recommend other entrepreneurs or potential entrepreneurs not make the same mistake that you made? Yeah, I, I think I've had a, <laughs> I've certainly had a, a, a ton of fa- failures along the way. And, and I want to highlight really like two, two primary failures. The first failure was before I became an entrepreneur. And uh, I've, I've always viewed myself as an entrepreneur. I always wanted to be one. I, I was drawn to the freedom and uh, not having a boss, anyone telling me what to do. But what I was trying to do was convince my brother to go into business with me, convince my coworker to go with, into business with me, really like sell this idea of contra- entrepreneurship. And I had a high risk tolerance. I was willing to, to uh, try something and fail. And, you know, I knew there's always a, a job for me that, that I would be able to land. And I did that for about 10 years. And I could not convince a single soul uh, to go into business with me. And, uh, what I realized the, the lesson I learned was instead of convincing non-entrepreneurs to go into business with you, put yourself around other entrepreneurs. So I started going to start up weekend events. I started going to like hackathons and it was at this point, I really started to meet entrepreneurial people. And that's when I met Jeremy and Lindsay, my current business partners, who uh, really have been a godsend to me because I am not focused enough to stay on the path for a long enough period of time. And they kind of help with those waves of business, the ups and downs. And really building those partnerships is, is what allowed Beard Brand to be successful. All my other fail, failed projects were me, 100% uh, owner. So I, I'm a big believer in partnerships. And then the other one is as a business grows, is understanding your shift in roles. I, I've moved to a management role and we have 10 employees now and, and understanding how to, you know, like set expectations to manage through KPIs and, and also to not micromanage was a pretty big deal. But we had one of our inventory managers uh, in the early days, she ordered, essentially, we just worked through the, the end of it. The end of the inventory she bought was uh, just went through in 2021 right now. And she bought it in 2015. So imagine four years of inventory for an item. And this was, the, this was not one thing. This was like multiple times she made that mistake. So, you know, both like helping them understand what success is and, uh, you know, being hands-off was a skill that I've learned over the years. And so the key takeaway, Eric, what, what's the one tip you would, yeah. I mean, is there a one or two tips? Yeah. So, give? so with the, the employee management, I would say you need to have KPIs that are both like, uh, they have a, a positive and a negative trait. So like, for instance, the, the most simple one is revenue. You want to have, you know, a high KPI for revenue, but you want to have it balanced out by profitability. Uh, 
So like, you don't want to grow at all costs. You want to grow and maintain this profitability. So, you know, in the inventory management thing would be the same thing. You want to have this amount of products, but you don't want to carry it for more than three months or something like that. And that's very interesting. You make a really great point and something that we at, at Area 627 really, you know, sort of hammer in. It's, it's not necessarily about growth at all costs. It's about running a business smart, being profitable, and maybe foregoing some opportunity in order to make sure that your business is healthy. Because there's, there's, it's real sexy these days. I see, you know, a lot of these, these businesses that are out there trying to just like grow and it's all about the exit. It's all about the exit and running a business and growing a business based with, or on that mentality, with that mentality of, of trying to just grow at all costs, not really worry about money, just in hopes of, of getting that exit is very different from being profitable in the way that, that we all as, as a group and as a company sort of embrace the, the, the process and the, the profitability and, and just running the business smart. And so that's a, a great point. Antonio, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your failures and what you learned from that? You know, I've had a lot of failures that if people see them from the outside, they're like, oh yeah, I mean, that sucked. You know, the, a bankruptcy, uh, getting fired from my job because not understanding that I probably shouldn't be saying certain things. All of that can be viewed as, you know, as a big failure, but the one that really gets me and I still have this issue and it's, I think it's just something that is part of who I am. And I know Ryan's pointed this out to me, Aaron, you've pointed this out, Eric, not yet, but I'm sure you will at some point. And for me, it's not moving fast enough when there's a window of opportunity and not understanding, like to me, I see opportunities all the time. And unfortunately, because I'm usually taxed out and my resources are spread so thin, I don't have a reserve that I can go in and boom, hit it. There's a project that I know, for, you know, that fragrance project that Aaron has been egg egging me on about. Like we've been talking about this for three years. And in that time period, you've launched a successful fragrance brand and you're like, you know, Antonio, you were telling me about this. And I said, oh, that's a good idea. And I'll, we went out and you launched something and, you know, I can use all the excuses in the book, but I know that I need to get better about having people that can go execute when I need it. And also having those resources there. Um, what's helped me, I guess, kind of get past this because it, it is this FOMO. It's this fear of missing out. And I, you jump on all these things is taking that step back and trying to say, okay, I'm building up my reserves. I can't immediately fix this problem, but it is something I'm aware of and I'm trying to better manage. Um, so yeah, not seeing these opportunities, not understanding that there are windows when those opportunities are great. And when they're not, I was listening to, you know, um, the, the found, who was the guy at Dollar Shave Club? What was his name? Mike. Mike. Yeah. I was listening to him. He was talking about how if they, he started Dollar Shave Club in 2011, if he would have started it now, it's a whole different landscape. When he started influence, the idea of influence didn't really exist. They were there, but they didn't call themselves influencer. There wasn't this whole, it wasn't as busy of a marketplace as it is. And I think people need to recognize what worked a decade ago was cool, but it's not going to work today. And you need to trust your gut when you see that opportunity and have resources that you've been building up and stashing that you can then deploy to try to make a go at it. And I think you make a really good point and something I just want to touch on real quick. As an entrepreneur, you've got to be willing to jump without things being perfect all the time in order to you know, basically capitalize on these windows that Antonio spoke about. about. And one of the things that I hear, you know, everybody, I, I talk to a lot of people, everybody I think likes the idea of being in business or being an entrepreneur, but it's not for everybody, but it's very romantic, right? Oh, work for yourself. You think about all of the great things, but what stops a lot of people is thinking that they need to have everything perfect before they actually execute or try. And one of the things that I do well is that I just jump, you know, I'm willing to try. I failed really big. And when you fail really big, those little failures, they don't scare you as much, but you've got to get that failure out of the way and sort of like develop a little bit of callous um, or else, you know, that fear of failure, a lot of times will prevent you from 
going out and just trying and then adjusting. You're going to screw things up in the beginning. It's just a fact. Get it off the table. It's going to happen. But you've got to be willing to absorb the punches and get back up and, and continue on your journey. Ryan, you've been hit a few times with some punches along your entrepreneurial journey. Why don't you talk a little bit to people about sort of your biggest failures and what you learn from them? Yeah, it's an interesting question. You know, I think the more the longer you've been an entrepreneur, like I don't even relate to that word as far as failure. You know, like I know, like Antonio said, people could probably look outside and say all oh, these things, you know, you failed at these things. But I just think, oh, it didn't work. So I'm going to try something else. Um, so it's real. I mean, I've made a lot of mistakes, but I, I don't nothing comes up to me as like, oh, that, you know, there was this monumental failure. There's all just adjustments. I mean, the big, you know, I guess the two biggest failures initially, you know, getting fired um, and then losing $5,000 when I had no money. And that was going to, that was how I was supposed to start, right? That was a school of hard knocks right out of the gate. Um, but it's, you just keep going and keep, keep trying new things, like you said, and, and definitely do not have to have, you know, it's the figure it out as you go method. At least that's, that's how I do it. And, um, you know, I've had things that, you know, like Sparta Strength, like, I don't consider that a failure. Now, did that become a big successful company? No. Like, did it make me some money? Yeah, but even still not enough to do just that business. But looking back now, it's like that helped me learn YouTube. It helped me learn videography. It helped me learn production. It helped me learn being a performer, which then those skills transferred to show, you know, and, uh, and so that, and that has become a very successful business. So, so it's like, you know, someone could say, oh, Smarter Strength failed, but I'd be like, nah, man, it was a training ground for me. I had fun. I got in shape. I got gym equipment. I learned all these skills. That horse may have died, but I know how to ride the horse. And now I'm on a, on a new one. And, and same thing for, for hopefully, you know, the next venture for me is singing and, and uh, going down that journey. And that, that's something I just want to talk about real quick. Um, one of the things that I've always admired from about you, Ryan, is that you're willing to try things that are, that are challenging and learn something. I think a lot of times as entrepreneurs or, or, or just, I guess, you know, people in general, when we try something and we're not amazing at it right away, we give up. It's like, I wasn't good at that. I've got to, I've got to try something else. And I think as an entrepreneur, you know, that is a dangerous place to be because you'll try something. It won't work the way that you expect it to immediately. And you give up this close. You're so close that if you would have just pushed through a little bit further, a little bit harder, it would have ended up being amazing. Potentially talk a little bit at Ryan about how you don't allow fear or the fear of not being excellent at something to not basically overwhelm you to the point of not trying. You try things. If there's something that you're interested in, you know, you're just going to say, fuck it. I'm going to try it. If I'm amazing at it, great. If not, that's okay. I'm going to learn to get better. Talk a little bit about that process for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that process now that I've been through it so much and it's familiar. Um, and, and I guess the easiest way to, to describe it for anyone, you know, if you're going through it is, the most visual way for me of going through that process was learning how to dance because I was terrible and I knew I was bad and it was kind of, you know, it was embarrassing because it's like, you know, a girl asked me to dance and I'm like, okay. And it's like, I know I don't know the moves and I'm kind of off beat. Um, but so I call that the dance suck phase, you know, where you just suck, but I know that there's no way I can read all the blog posts in the world that I want. I could talk to everyone about how much I'm going to learn dance, but until I practice and practice it, wrong essentially i'm not going to get better uh so you have to just get you know get your reps in same thing with the gym until you know unless you are pushing the bench press you are not going to build bigger muscles and what happens when you do that well you're putting stress on your chest and you tear it down so it's uncomfortable and, and what happens when you're trying a dance move that you're not good at well you're kind of tearing down your ego or whatever and and so there, like you said there's people who will quit because it's like oh this hurts but if you understand and reframe it, it's like, oh, like this tearing down is part of the process. And the, the secret to getting through is like, I just keep doing it. Like, wow, that's not hard. You know, it might, it might take longer than I want, but like it's there's and there's plenty of ways to speed it up. The number one way is getting mentors and someone who's successfully done whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, but you, you have to get your reps in and there's no skipping it. And uh, as soon as you accept that and it's like, all right, you know, I failed, you know, this rep didn't make it. I'm just going to keep doing it. Um, 
that's how you know it's not sexy but that's that's the that's the secret i think that's a great point you know there is no fast track to success this is something it's going to take time it takes work it takes sleepless nights what i want to do now is talk a little bit about this new venture that we started um it's super exciting um i'm going to just talk real quick about how it all kind of came to be um i've been thinking a lot more about this whole like mentorship you know, entrepreneurial mentorship type of thing. And I love the show Shark Tank, right? And so at the last conference we had, Men Influential Media or the Men Influential Conference, we did this like mock Shark Tank where it was myself, it was Eric, it was Kelly Thornton, my business partner, Tiege. We basically sat up there and we were a panel and we allowed people to submit uh, people that actually had businesses. They, they were able to actually come up and pitch. And my idea was, okay, well, you're in a room now of 400 people that could potentially help you or be a, a great resource or business partner. It was so much fun that I couldn't stop thinking about this idea of, well, what would happen if I, I, I did more of this? And then I started thinking a little bit more. I'm like, okay, well, what if I had $100,000 that I could potentially invest in a business or an entrepreneur to help them get to the next level? I talked about it on a T. Shanley blog. And then I said to Antonio, I called him, I said, hey, I'm thinking about doing this where I want to invest $100,000 up to $100,000 in a potential business or an entrepreneur. He said, well, I want to do that. I said, well, great. Well, who else would we want to actually do this and start this fund? And it was Ryan Masters, Eric Banholtz. Those were the four people that, and myself. And so the whole idea when we came together was we wanted to create a resource and assistance to entrepreneurs that are already doing what they love and, and doing their business but they couldn't be starting from zero. We wanted to make sure that they at least had $100,000 in sales per year before we would actually come in. Eric, why don't you talk a little bit about, about what Area 627 is about and why you're excited about it? Yeah, I, I mean, I think you you nailed, uh, you hit the hammer on the nail or whatever they say. But I, I think that the big thing for us is we, all four of us, we look back to where we were as younger entrepreneurs and going back to the earlier podcast, we realize all these mistakes we made. And if I had a time machine rather than invest in other companies, I would just have a time machine and go back and just tell myself all the secrets, uh, to, to know, and just like expediate the, the way that we want to grow. So the name area six, two, seven, six, two, seven is a very purposeful number because it, it stands for six figures to seven figures. And what we want to do is really build partnerships and mentorships with people who are passionate about their business. We're not looking for guys and girls who just want to, you know, build something for the next exit or get on Forbes magazine or whatever. We want to work with people who are passionate about what they're building. Just like I'm passionate about Beard Brand and I'm going to be with Beard Brand for the next 20 or 30 years. We want to find other people who want to build these long-term multi-generational businesses and help show them how to be profitable and grow and scale and do this where you're maintaining your own freedom, you're maintaining your sanity, you're enjoying the process, you're free to do the things that you love. And really, like Antonio said earlier, let's like build a business that gives you something that that nothing else in life can give you. Uh, so we're just big believers in entrepreneurship. And and really, we want to, to, to share all the, the good fortune that we've had uh, in terms of experience and, and a little bit of funding as well. Antonio, why are you excited about Area 627? Well, I, I want to talk about, you know, just being an entrepreneur can be incredibly lonely. As you talked about, you know, you have this mentality, Aaron, of, hey, I'm doing this. I don't need anyone. You know, Ryan, you've had this mentality. And where I find, you know, we talk about, you know, Eric, you couldn't get your brother. You couldn't get your friends to join you. It's like you're to me, most entrepreneurs are surrounded by people who don't get them. And for you to be able to come to Area 627, even if we don't invest in you, we're going to treat you with respect. We're going to talk to you in a language that you get. And you're like, hey, these are my people. You know, we've already found one business I know that we really are excited about. I think we're excited about it because, yes, we're going to be able to, we think, be able to make money and help him 10x his business possibly within a year. But I think more importantly, we actually like the guy. We're like, yeah, this would be, it'll be great to be in meetings and strategy calls and talking about potential and where can he take this business and what's next. And that's what I get excited about is, 
you know, the companies we're going to invest in, we're going to be able to help. You talked about no shortcuts in business. Well, maybe there's a few. And one of them I think is to instantly grab a whole bunch of people that are excited about your business and want to be a part of it and are coming in as partners. They're not looking to take control of it. We're not VCs here. What we're looking for though, is to be like, go, to join the ride and to be a part of watching this thing grow. Cause whether, you know, I've got 5% of a business or 55% of a business, you know, Sometimes I think it's better to have a small percentage because I get to play the passive, you know, I'm a part of that company. I'm an owner and I get to offer my advice and be an assistant. But at the same time, I don't have to worry about running the thing. It's not in control. And I get to just kind of be part of the party that is the growth of this business. No, I love that. Ryan, what are you excited about Area 6274? Why, why, are, you, why are you so excited about it? Yeah, you know, echoing kind of what, the other guys have said it's just exciting to see other entrepreneurs on the journey and based on what we're looking for people who already have a proven offer and then just it's kind of like a fun chess piece or puzzle it's like okay how do we help them grow and it kind of reminds you you know rep, you reminisce back on growing your businesses so uh, I'm excited to to solve those puzzles and to help others and get that energy and um and see where it takes us. Eric, what type of businesses are we looking to invest in at Area 627? So if you're out there listening, guys, this is open, right? We found, we feel our first investment and new business, and we're really excited about this. But we were talking the other day, and um, we have weekly calls, weekly strategy calls, where we actually go over and review the submissions. And we were we were talking about this, and, and really, you know, we have a, a sum of money. We each pulled our money and created this fund. And we realized, we said, you know what? It's almost like we're, we're getting a new friend. How many friends can we really have? It can't be 20. It can't be 30 because there's a degree of, of effort that has to go into this on all of our parts. You know, we all are very busy. We all have successful businesses. We, you know, have loved ones that we need to spend time with. And so for us to actually not only invest our money, but our time, that's the valuable thing in this whole, you know, sort of this, this process and this transaction. It's not just about us giving you $100,000 and we get X percentage of equity. It's about the effort and the, 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 the bandwidth that we've got to commit to you because it's, it's a two-way street that we're actually doing. And so, Eric, talk a little bit about the type of businesses that we're actually interested in and looking for, like I was saying, you know, we can't have 20, we're probably going to max this out for all intents purposes at five. We found one, are you one of the next four? If you guys are out there listening that think you might have a business, Eric, talk about the type of businesses that we're interested in investing in or, or looking at, or that should submit an application. Yeah, it's, um, we really want to focus on the companies that we have expertise in. Uh, We're not going to be able to help you uh, you know, build the, the next Google or software tech or so where our expertise is, is in e-commerce and e-commerce in both physical products and digital products. Um, our, our team's been very competent at building that out. We understand, uh, the direct consumer mindset. We understand the relationships. We understand the, the technology platforms, uh, and we have a lot of relationships in the spaces as well. But when it comes to businesses within that, we are wide open. So uh, what we're typically looking for are companies, obviously, that have uh, profitability or the potential to be profitable as you continue to grow and continue to scale. Uh, we're not looking for businesses that, that really need a lot of assets and a lot of capital for a long period of time to get profitable. Uh, again, we're in this six figure thing. If you're bigger than six figures, it's, it's, uh, very unlikely that we'll be able to, um, really invest enough money to, to make a dent in your business. So you would either have to be looking at us from more of a partnership, uh, standpoint, uh, and less a cash standpoint. And it will be that, uh, partnership, which is going to bring you the value. So, uh, a lot of e-commerce is if you're in e-commerce and you're in that six figure, you're kind of like a sole operator uh, or maybe you're a couple of partners and you're looking for a, a third party to come in and, and be that, uh, you know, really that decision maker or, or that, that person to lean on as an outside 
take on things, then we would really bring a lot of value to your organization. Ryan, what are you looking for in terms of an investment or a business to potentially help out? You know, one of the things and, and reasons why you are so amazing as a business partner is that, you know, in the e-commerce space, unless you figure something else out that we don't know, it really is about a lot of paid traffic. Paid traffic is one of the ways that you can escalate and scale a business. It's about finding that offer. It's about finding the audience. And then what is the mechanism to actually scale and grow? Once you find that and can actually convert somebody at a, at a, 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 a number in terms of a dollar number, that's, that's able to maintain your growth and profitability. That's when you can really scale a business. Talk a little bit about the, the things that you're looking for in a potential business to, to invest your time and money in. Yeah, I, that's exactly what I'm looking for is something, you know, is it scalable? And a lot of people might think, oh, like just, yeah, I can just sell more. But it's, it's, it's not that simple because you need to look on the back end too in terms of if all of a sudden, you know, you're selling 100 units a day and, and we bump you up with, with paid traffic to 10,000, do you have the customer support to, to answer that? And do you have the shipping logistics? And, and so that's one of the things I'm looking at in, as far as are they in a position to scale? But really the biggest thing initially is like, is this a proven offer? Meaning, and the number that we've kind of said is, are they doing 100,000 at least a year in sales? Because if not, that's a very different problem. Once you're doing say 100,000 in sales, then, then it's like, okay, we need to get to a million. And that's the whole focus of this, of this uh, company. Um, so I'm just looking for, you know, do they have that hundred thousand in sales? And then do people love the product and or brand? You know, is there, is there that emotional connection? Um, and if it's not necessarily there, as long as they don't hate the product, you know, we can, you know, that's something that marketing can build into, but um, that's really the biggest thing is I'm looking at the front end of scale, you know, obviously just, can, can, can we blow this up with Facebook ads or Google ads, et cetera. And then the back end of the scales, like, can they support customer? Because it does no good to scale yourself to a million in sales and have one star reviews across the board. Cause then you're going to be out of business in six months. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Antonio, how about yourself? What are you looking for in terms of a business and a new partner? Yeah, I'll, I'll reiterate. I mean, the specific things that Ryan and Eric have already hit on, you know, you've got to have an offer that is good. Maybe it's not perfect. Maybe it's not irresistible, but you are getting some sales and you've proven in a sense that there is an opportunity here. Um, another thing that I know we love to see, and this is something Eric's done really well, is he's created a whole community uh, around the urban beardsman. And, you know, I mean, there's even beards named after the guy. And that's what we're looking for is someone that's going to go into an industry and is going to be able to, you know, they, they understand they're, they're, they're thinking category. They're not just thinking, they're thinking they can go into that entire category and possibly grow and own it. Because our goal is not just to 10X these people. It's, I mean, we'd love to see somebody 100X, but for you to be able to 100X from, let's say a $100,000 a year business, you know, you got to be able to get to, you know, the, that, that's going to be big. You know, we're talking 10 million. You got to be, and to do that, you've got to be thinking bigger in terms of your category. Uh, as marketers, you know, we're, you've got four YouTubers here. You've got four people, you know, people that have created websites and are very, under, we understand social media. We've got a person that's an expert on, on being able to scale people up. Another person that's an expert on deals. Another people, person that's an expert on be, how to set up your company. Uh, for me, it's about systemization and being able to optimize that and be able to set that up throughout a company. So we're looking for companies that we can add on to that. And then, you know, for anything, we want to be fuel to their fire. But if they don't have a fire, if they don't at least have like a little burning flame, if, you know, it's like embers on it. You know, if you throw gasoline on embers, it's just going to put them out. But if you've got a flame, you throw gasoline on it, you're going to, you're going to burn off your, your eyebrow hair. And that's what we're looking to do. Not burn off your, you know, your hair on your face, but we're looking to, to blow this thing up or throwing some gasoline on the fire. Go ahead, Eric. I wanted to also add in like, what's really important to me personally is a lot of the culture aspect. It's the people who uh, really kind of align philosophically with us who want to build long-term sustainable businesses who are laid back, who want to enjoy the journey, want to enjoy the ride. So again, going back, we're, we're not looking, I don't like selling the idea of like Lambos and, and fancy cars and all that. I want to, I want to sell the idea of like freedom and working with really cool people. 
because uh, that's what brings me value in life. And I think what brings you guys value as well. The reason we started this company, just laying it out there to you guys listening, is to help. We want to be that, that support system for you. We want to find incredible entrepreneurs that have a passion for their business and the journey. And we want to be a value to you. Um, if you guys are out there listening and you've got a business that is doing somewhere around a hundred thousand, it can be a little bit less, it can be a little bit more, but the bottom line is that you feel that we, as the four of us in area six to seven could bring value to your world. You know, if you don't think we really bring any value, you definitely should not apply. But if you're a business, an entrepreneur, and you are looking for somebody, maybe it's partner, you have one, you've got two, but you really need to get to that next level and you're interested in talking to us, even you know if it's just a conversation, please go to area627.com and submit an application. We're gonna ask you some numbers. We're gonna ask you some questions, but the whole idea is that we wanna align ourselves with entrepreneurs that have a vision, that have a passion, and, and somebody that we feel that we can help. There are companies that we've talked to that are amazing companies, but honestly, the value just isn't there for, for, the, for the company. We don't bring the value in certain spaces. Not to say that these businesses aren't incredible, but it's just not something that we feel that we can really add value. And if we can't add value, we're not just looking to give you $100,000 and saying, good luck, we're rooting for you. We want to be in the trenches with you. We want to be there to support you and your mission and your goals. And like Eric said, we want to make sure that we are around people that we align with philosophically. And if you're just looking to grow it at any cost, any expense in order to sell it to a big business, that's not in line with what we're wanting to do. We are wanting to help you bootstrap it. We're wanting to help you grow to that next level. So guys, in conclusion, what I'd like to do is what is the best piece of advice you would give for an aspiring entrepreneur out there, Eric, for, you know, sort of if all the tips out there, there's a lot of business advice out there online. What is your Eric Banholtz number one or two pieces of business advice for the aspiring entrepreneur that wants to start possibly or grow a business? Yeah, I would, I would go with one of my favorite taglines, which is haters going to hate. Uh, as an entrepreneur, you typically see the world differently and you'll get a, a lot of criticism, a lot of negative feedback on what you're doing. And uh, I like to just be like, well, haters going to hate and then just go off and do my thing and change the world to uh, the way I think the world should be. Antonio, what about you? Number one piece of advice. I'm going to be really specific here. And I'm going to say, you know, think about what you're building up this business for. I know for a lot of guys that have a family, they end up sacrificing everything, including their family to build up this business that they built for their family. And that's you know not the way to do it. Um, you know, if I've got four young kids, I've got a wife that I'm like, happy to say I still have a great relationship with. Um, so find a way to be able to set working hours. And let's say you are able to set that eight hour you know, which I think you can get a lot done in eight hours. If you set that time limit, um, you know, think for the first 45 minutes of that day and then the last 15 minutes reflect and, and write that down. And I've actually learned a lot from Ryan in that way, living, staying with him for a while. It was funny. My wife was asking, does this guy ever work? Cause he would spend two to three hours in the morning, you know, just reading and thinking. And then he would take a break and then go spend two more hours reading and thinking. But I think that you know, if you're not thinking and designing your business, who else is doing it? You know, that's, that's what the entrepreneur does in the business owner. And you've got to remember uh, to do that, me included. Ryan, how about yourself? What piece of advice would you give the aspiring entrepreneur or entrepreneur that is starting the process and journey? Yeah, I would say, you know, the business growth is going to be, there's going to be a, some kind of ratio of business growth limited or scaled based on your personal growth. And that's what, you, as an entrepreneur, that is what you're signing up for is the journey of personal growth. And so you need to lean into that and embrace it. And I'll say for me, like Antonio said, I read all the time and I would suggest that you do as well. And, and for me, like I crossed seven figures when I had read 550 books because I can track that on Amazon and I just was looking that up. And so that doesn't mean I don't know what the number is for you, but just to get, instead of saying, oh, read arbitrary, whatever, it's like set a goal to read 500 books. And on that journey of growth, like your business, there's just no way if you do that, your business cannot grow and you cannot grow as a person and therefore help tons of tons of more people than you're probably even thinking of now. I love that. 
guys, we're going to wrap things up. We actually need to get on a call and uh, and talk a little bit about some more some more entrepreneurship stuff and uh, some Area Six Two Seven business. Guys, I just want to thank you so much for not only you know coming on this podcast and and talking to the uh, the gentleman out there, but also just for being my friend and 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 business partner. I mean, it's been incredible. My life is better because all four all three of you are in it. And, um, and, you know, I think that's one of the pieces of business advice I would like to like to give is, is none of this would have happened if it wasn't for me being willing to get out uncomfortable and do something that I was a little bit scared to do. And it also wouldn't have happened if Antonio hadn't reached across the aisle to actually say, Hey, let's do something together. When you find people that are, are your, your people, your tribe, like for me, it was, it was all life changing. And so, you know, my life is better because being an entrepreneur is a lonely journey at times, but surrounding yourself and having people in your life that you could call, that you could lean on, that you could just get advice from is invaluable. And so just want to thank all of you. I love you guys to death and, and would do anything for you. And I uh, just really appreciate each and every one of you for being here. And like I said, for being my friend. So guys, that is where we're going to wrap things up. If you have a business, an entrepreneur that is looking for some advice, possibly money, Area 627 can help, guys, potentially. Please go to area627.com and, and submit an application. We may be right for you and we may not be, but it's definitely worth, worth a shot because you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I don't know who said that either. It was Michael Jordan or Wayne Gretzky, one of the two. But, uh, but guys, thank you so much for being here. Any final words uh, to before we sign off? Antonio, how about you? Any final words? I love you. I love you too. Eric? <laughs> keep on growing and ryan what do you got for the gentleman yeah keep keep growing and don't quit go through that dance it. suck phase you can do it you got to put in the reps gentlemen don't give mm -hmm. up unless it's time to give up and try something else then then don't take it too personally we all fail we all are going to have to work extra hard and, and be smart to to succeed but at the end of the day it's about happiness and and finding what makes you happy along this journey and if you're in a situation or position, you know, life is too, life is too short to be miserable for eight or nine hours a day. It's time to get busy. Stop thinking about it and do it, do the work. It's not going to be easy, but when you figure it out, it's going to be the best thing you ever did guys. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time.